good morning and uh, welcome to another one. Uh, we're out again, it's nice and early, well, sort of half six I suppose in the morning. Left home about six o'clock and uh, just looking at the light, sorry, I'm just looking at this light here as I'm walking. Yeah, I've just come out somewhere local. Looks like we've got a fresh tree down across the path. Um, yeah, I've come out somewhere local and uh, I'm at Buckley Hill, I've just seen on the sign. I've known this as something different, but yeah, this is what it's called, Buckley Hill. And it is a bit of a hill, as you can see in front of me. I've got to sort of walk up there. So I'm out to get a little bit of exercise, carry my bag, get my heart rate up a little bit, get this morning light, which you can see catching my face every so often. The sun is absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous morning. Perfect morning for a walk. Perfect morning just to get up and get out. Not so perfect for photography. So I'm not sure what this video is gonna be about. Um, I think I'm gonna have a wander around. I'd like to do a couple, of, a couple of videos sort of going back to basics. So maybe we'll do the rule of thirds or something today. Something simple. Uh, oh no, there's a tree here. There's a tree here that I've taken photographs of and I've been wanting to try and get it in the perfect light. And it looks like the wind's had it. It's a dead old tree, all twisty and gnarly. I've been in this woods a couple of times um, with you guys, but yeah, it's finally, it's finally come to pass. It's now um, leaning and snapped off at the trunk. So that's that one down. Yeah, there's quite a few trees down actually. I'm very surprised since the last time I was here. Oh, I've got to go up this bit now so I could get out of breath. So yeah, I'd just like to make a few videos, just staying local. I'm only halfway, half an hour from home. Um, it's May 25th, I think it is today. So not ideal for sunrise, way too early for me to get up. So I thought I'd come out at six, have a bit of a walk and see what, see what happens. Bring you with me and uh, yeah, basically to get exercise and get these legs moving. Ooh. But yeah, I'm gonna try and work on the rule of thirds for you and uh, see if I can explain simplicity and basics. Uh, it may all go wrong and I may end up just taking a couple of snapshots of the light coming through the trees. Look at that. Doesn't that look good when you move around and it just catches your eyes and it lights up all this bracken and ferns. We'll see what happens. We'll see what we do. As soon as I started walking away after I finished talking to you just then, and I thought, hang on a minute, there's a photograph here in this light. I've just seen the sun coming through. It's caught my eye on the bracken or on the ferns. There's got to be a photograph. And the first thing that clicked in my head, wouldn't that be cool with a sunburst? So um, yeah, tripod's out, camera's up high. Um, and I'm just trying to get a sunburst now. Now, all right, rule of thirds. Let's work on the rule of thirds because this actually works on the theory of rule of thirds. Um, I want to put the sun somewhere in the top thirds. That way I've got the sun on the top thirds and then the main interest of the ferns and the light coming through the ferns on the bottom section of the thirds. Um, so that's a basic principle of thirds for you. It's not the best example, but uh, first photograph of the morning. It's quiet, I'm listening to the sound of the birds. There's no one around and I'm just trying to take a photograph of this. Um, I've got the lens cap on at the moment because I've, I've got a theory that if the sun's always on the sensor while you're messing around, it's got to be causing hot spots or it's got to be causing a problem. I don't know. I don't know if it does. If it, if, please let me know in the comments whether it actually um, affects your camera if you've got the sun directly facing the lens all the time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the theory. So camera's up high. The reason the camera's up high is I want to sort of look down on the ferns a little bit. And there's some little tiny um, codwebs 
or spider webs actually on the ferns, which is quite nice. It's difficult to get it to set up because you're looking straight into the, into the light, which is quite difficult. Uh, and that's actually quite nice as well at the moment. And obviously the sun's moving, so all the time the sun's moving, you've got to move your composition around a little bit. So all I need to do really is move my composition around just slightly left and right, or possibly up and down now, until I can get that sun just bursting through and the sun's gone higher. So now I've got to come down a bit lower. As I stoop down, you'll see the sun catching my face. So now I've got to bring the camera down a little bit to uh, catch that sunlight because it's gone up into the tree canopy a bit more now. So let's bring that down a little bit and let's see if we can catch that sunlight again. And there it is. Right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it quite wide because I like the ferns. The ferns, it's all about the light in the ferns. You've got these two trees, which absolutely frames the sun. It's absolutely fantastic for composition wise. Um, but I need to get that sun. Now I'm at F18, which is giving me a nice sunburst and you've got to keep your lens dead clean for this. Two second timer's got to go on. I'm going to put a two second timer on. I'm focusing on the ferns in the foreground because that to me is the most interesting part and the sun is just a bonus. And then I'm going to hit that and it's causing me a nice little sunburst in the top, top third section. And I might just lift that up a little bit higher just so I can get the sun more on the line of, th well, more on the thirds, that's better. Uh, let's just bring it over slightly, twist it around a little bit go a little bit wider couldn't we there we go just to get rid of that canopy and then we need to go in a bit tighter just to get rid of the light coming through the top that'll do us right i'm going to take three exposures of this i've got the sun pretty much dead center let's just see if we can get it over a bit more just get the sun in the center is that working that's working i've got a tiny sunburst now let's have a look oh it's too small too small Sun's going up quicker and quicker and quicker. If I don't get this quick, the sun's gonna be too high. Right, there we go, there we go. We've got the sun up in the top. Got those nice shiny fir ferns, and we've even got a leading line. I'm gonna hit the two second time before the sun moves too much. It's causing a nice little sunburst in the top. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna do one overexposed, and I'm gonna put my hand over the top of the camera, just so I can get the bottom part of the image in. That's basically just hiding the flare from the sun. Now I'm gonna do one underexposed with the sun at the top, just slightly, just to make sure I just control the, the little strips coming off the sun a little bit more. Obviously they're blown out because that's what it's gonna do. And again, I'll take one even lower underexposed again. That's just got some tiny little stripes and the sun's moving really quick now. So uh, one more. That should give me a balance of exposures enough to have a play with. It's just pretty. It's dead pretty the way the, the light's coming through and hitting those ferns. So there, there's the first image done and I've only been out five minutes. This is a beautiful view. Uh, I've taken a photograph here once before, early morning, just as the sun was coming up, and uh, it was quite a nice, quite a nice image. And uh, yeah, I'll bang it up for you, as we normally do, show you what's going on. But yeah, this is a, this is the Cheshire Plain, as you're looking out across this way. And when we go up there, I'll show you the same going up that way. And you have to excuse the light on my face because you can't see me. I'm coming in and out of the shadows. There I am. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a stunning view. It'd be nice, I'd love to get a morning mist, a really nice morning mist in this plane. And then you're just looking out across the mist, that'd be really cool. Um, sandstone, we're on sandstone. This is uh, the sandstone trail, for the, which runs right through Cheshire, as far as I know. I'm not great on all this technical stuff. 
But yeah, it's a lovely little place. If you're living in Cheshire or anywhere around this area and you want a nice little walk, there's a couple of very nice little walks around here. You've got this one here around this woodland. You've got one going around a trail on the other side and then a bit further up where I was in a recent video up on Bickerton Hill. You can go up and around that way. Some couple of nice little walks, um, not too strenuous. So let's head on and uh, see if I can find, oh look, overexposed. <laughs> let's head on and see if we can find another exposure that I can explain better the rule of thirds. Uh, if not, then I'll, uh, I'll have five minutes and just explain it anyway. Okay, so uh, what are the rule of thirds? You can see on the back of my screen at the moment, I'm hoping you can see this properly, we've got at least four little lines, four little lines, well they are four little lines, one, two, three, and there's one there for. This is dividing my screen up into the rule of thirds. Now I like to keep that screen on or that graph on because I like to know where the intersections are. There's an intersection right there, there's an intersection right there that you can see there as well. If I turn the display off it just becomes a plain, a plain picture. So I like to keep the display on which gives me the information that I can see in front of me. Now just to basically explain the simple rule of thirds, I'm going to take myself hashtag keep the selfie uh, of me looking out across the Cheshire Plain. Now what I wanted to do, and I've moved the camera around, I'm going to just move it around again so you can see what I'm doing. Now what I want to do is I want to get me in the in a thirds. Now if I stand on this rock over here I'm going to be on the edge of the frame. If I stand, if I stand on this edge of this rock here and I'm in the centre of the frame it just wouldn't have that same appeal. Yeah, so what I want to try and do is I know I'm going to stand on this point there. So I'm going to move that to intersect one of these lines with a rule of thirds. Now I also know that my head's going to be somewhere up there. Now if I lift the camera up slightly, I can probably intersect my head on that rule of thirds. Now the other thing is, if you see this horizon line, when I was down there like this, the horizon line is quite high. And what I like to do is put the horizon line, if I can, somewhere on the rule of thirds, which also gives you a straight line if you're using the back of the screen like this. So you can get the horizon on the rule of thirds, rather than having it bang in the middle like that, and it just doesn't look quite right. So we put the horizon there on the rule of thirds, and I know I'm now gonna be somewhere on this intersection on the rule of thirds. So I'm gonna lock the camera off there, something like that. Now I'm on a bracketed exposure and I'm going to focus on that point there where I know I'm going to be stood. So on standing on that sandstone I'm going to put a focus point there. Auto focus as per normal. ISO 160, uh, basic image of 40 of a second and uh, F11. So I'll make sure my 10 second timer is on, give me time to walk over there and I'm going to hit the shutter button and you should see me walk over in the countdown. So it gives me 10 seconds to walk over into the frame. I'm going to stand on that point exactly where I said I was going to stand. Try and cause a little bit of a pose, a bit of light through my legs, looking out into the Cheshire Plain. And there's the exposure. <laughs> Hopefully my lips weren't moving too much. And that should then give you a nice exposure. Let's just come back and have a look. We're going to put play on the back. You can see me there on the third. Let's go to the lighter image. Look at that, my head's there. Sitting on the thirds of the frame. Come back. Let's go to the overexposed one. You can see me there on the thirds of the frame and then the intersecting line coming through this way. My head's slightly higher than the intersection, but it doesn't matter because I'm on the third. So that's how you basically work out the simple third rule. And I quite like that little shadow of me in my backpack. So there's my selfie. What I will do is I'm going to take one, I'm going to move it around slightly. I'm going to put me right in the centre and show you the difference of what it looks like in the centre. 10 second timer, walk into the shot. Don't run because if you slip off the end, you're going to end up falling down. So we look out, nice little pose, 10 seconds. Click, click, click. Walk back. I do love a good selfie, I must admit. Walk back, and then I'm just going to show you what this looks like on the back of the screen. See, now I'm in the centre of the screen. And it doesn't quite have that same appeal. It looks a lot nicer when I'm off to one edge and I'm looking out into the plane, over, to, over, over the Cheshire plane. So that's a simple basic rule of thirds and enough on the selfies. Let's, um, let's go and find something. <laughs> let's go and find something in the woods to take pictures of. But it's just, it's just a nice morning. I'm just enjoying being out again. Mrs. C is at home. She's not with me at the moment. Let's just put you down. Um, she's not with me at the moment because her daughter works at the hospital and she's been doing taxi service, to be honest. Um, so she's not with me this morning, but I'm hoping we're going to get out and do a bit of a sunset this evening somewhere local. So maybe I'll, I'll drag her out the house and we'll go and find the sun going down together. So uh, that's the plan anyway.
and this is something I've explained to my subscribers in the past but if you're new to my channel never walk around without your lens cap on always put your lens cap on first before you walk away because if you do drop the camera or the camera falls off there's an aid of protection whereas without it there isn't Something else has caught my eye. Um, this tree, as I was just walking through the ferns, I noticed this tree and uh, it's caught my eye. I've taken something very similar to this once before. Hello. Uh, I've taken something very similar to this once before up in the Lake District um, of all these little branches coming out the trees. Um, again, I'll put the image up for you just to show you what the image is like. Um, and this has caught my eye for a similar reason. All these branches sticking out, um, very, very chaotic. And I want to try and make an image of this. Um, and it will probably work on a similar principle for the rule of thirds. So give me a moment to have a look at the, through the camera, try and line up an image, try and line up a composition. And uh, once I've got it, I'll explain why I've set it up the way I've set it up, if that makes sense. I think I've got something I'm happy with. Um, and this is one of those hit and miss images. It really is a hit and miss image. Um, so as you can see on the screen, uh, what I like to do is anything going into the corners of the frame, I like to line them up with a corner. So down in this bottom corner, I've got the branch leading right from this bottom corner, bringing your eye right through the image. So there's another one of these um, composition rules of trying to get diagonals to lead in um, from the corners if you can. Um, a couple of just heard a couple of people then behind me look over there just wonder what the hell it was behind me um so yeah let's focus back on there uh me intersecting lines i've got an intersecting line coming across the top that's where i've placed the main branch on the main trunk of the the tree through the top i've got another intersecting line coming down this way where you can see my little focus point is about there which is exactly the intersection line so i've made the main part of the interest which is where this line and this trunk lines up as being on the rule of thirds. Now for a very busy image, that gives it a little bit of uniformity. Um, that's a big word for me, isn't it? Uniformity, but yeah, that's your intersecting line. So that's what I'm working on. So we've got a rule of thirds. We've got a line coming this way, this way, this way, and this way. So I'm trying to use that intersection. Uh, we're gonna put a two second timer on, it's already on. Uh, I've not taken the exposure. I'm on bracketing, as you can see at the top there, I've got bracketing set up on the camera. And uh, I'm on F11. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna knock that down. I don't want that much depth in the image. I'm gonna bring that down to five, six, because I just want to focus on this point and I wanna get the rest of it going out of focus and there's a bird just flowing right past my face. So two second timer, let that do what it's gonna do. You can see it's taken five shots at different exposures. Um, and we'll go back to play and hopefully one of those will show you your intersection with your line coming up and the line coming through the image there. So I hope that explains that one and uh, I'm going to have to do a bit of Photoshop work on that I think to get that one to actually work.
definitely a few people now in the woods. There's another couple of people just walked past, which is fine because everyone's out having a bit of a walk in the morning, just moving my tripod legs. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really chaotically busy image, um, but I just like all the detail on uh, images like this. You've got all this nice ferns and the bark and it's just really chaotic, but chaotically weird. And again, whilst walking through, I've literally only come 50, 60, 100 feet and I've come across this. Um, I've probably seen it loads of times, but today it just catches my eye. Look at the lines coming through here. And I think this is gonna make a really, really nice photograph. Camera at 16 mil, get up on top of it like so, and just get the lovely S leading through the image into the canopy of the trees behind. So I'm gonna get the tripod set up here and uh, yeah, I think this is gonna be quite a nice shot. <laughs> yes, I do. All right, the camera is set up and I have got a beautiful image in the back of the display. And this is actually really, when I said it's not gonna be very easy to explain the rule of thirds, it's actually very easy to explain the rule of thirds. This is probably one of the better ones to explain and the rule of thirds works very, very well on this image. Um, I'm hopefully you can see the back of the screen. Now we're up in a, a vertical mode or a vertical position and my intersection lines are coming down this way two long ones coming down there. I've got one coming across there and one coming across there. I'm sure you probably can't see them on the screen. Um, but my intersecting line now is at this bottom corner there. So I've got an intersection coming through and it's right there where that big sort of where the branch or the knot is in the tree, the dark spot in the middle of that tree. And you can see I've worked from the bottom corner again and you've got the lines leading up through the image and they come up through there and it all curls round on that bottom line of the thirds. It all start to curl back that way. And when you get to the top sort of thirds, they seem to curl back the other way. So you've got the three different lines and the three different intersections or the four different intersections and they seem to sit really, really nicely on that spot there. So that's my first one. I'm at F11, uh, high ISO 160. And I'm gonna focus on that point as you can see the little tiny point there, I'm just gonna focus on that and to make sure my two second timer is on and I'm bracketing because it's got quite a lot of highlights up there and there's some dark bits down here in the bottom, but I'm re coming from this bottom edge and I wanna make sure I get this detail down here. So I'm gonna bracket the shot anyway. So focus on that point, two second timer. You can see the image counting away. Five shots, one over, one under. Uh, two over, two under uh, in increments of a stop each one. And then I'm gonna move the focus point up to that section about there. And at F11, it's probably sharp enough all the way through the image, but I just want to make sure because the detail in that dead tree is absolutely stunning. We won't be using the overexposed ones, but definitely the underexposed ones. You can see a little bit of light. And I'm also gonna focus right up in the distance on the canopy of trees up in the distance there. And I wanted to take that just to make sure we've got all that. And if you get a little bit of sun poking through them trees, you can just see up in that top corner, you just get a little bit of light coming through the trees. And I think that's it's gonna set it off quite nicely. So that, I think is gonna be a stunning photograph of lovely texture coming all the way through that branch and that tree. So there's another one, rule of thirds, intersection there and it all works out really, really well. If you were to move that around and put it sort of in the middle, it still looks good, but it just doesn't have that same, same appeal as when it's sitting there on that center thirds. And you definitely don't want it over on the side of the frame over there, it doesn't work at all. So to me, because you could have that section and you're gonna lose everything else. So if you were gonna do a selfie now, and I'm gonna explain this, if you're gonna do a selfie now, you could sit yourself up on that thirds up there Get yourself a nice little selfie. Now, why I'm talking to you, I'm gonna spin you round and you see this one here, look at this, for a nice dead tree. So I'm also gonna try, I'm gonna try and get a shot of that as well. But yeah, this tree here is just absolutely fantastic and gnarly.
I'm still on this tree. This tree is fantastic and it's explaining the rule of thirds in such a good way that you wouldn't normally use to explain the rule of thirds. Rather than having a person stood in that place, rather than having a tree or a lighthouse or a building or a car or something obvious to put in the thirds, this is actually working really, really well to explain how I would set up this composition. And uh, this one again is a great, great, great example. And the light's just amazing on this tree. I've already got the image set up at F8. Um, I'm going to actually go back up to F11 because I want all the detail. F11, and I've got this line, this split in the bark, right in the bottom corner. Um, do I go back onto bracketing? I think I will. I'm going to go back onto bracketing just to make sure I've got it all. But the dappled light sitting on the trunk, I've got this beautiful S line leading right through the image. And oh, the low light one's beautiful. But I just need to make sure I focus stack this all the way through the image because it is so close. I don't want to miss one bit of the texture on this. Um, I'm just going to waffle on while it's going on. So I've taken the second exposure, that's a little bit further into the middle of the frame. I'm going to go a bit further down the trunk, focus on that, and uh, take that one. Put my glasses on my head a minute while I'm looking up close. And then the rule of third intersection on this one is the little dead stump. And I will put some lines on the screen to show you exactly what I mean. But the rule of third intersection is the little dead stump sticking up. And there's also another intersection where the line curls back round and it's taken quite a long time to set the camera up exactly where I want it. Um, I don't mind the focus going off in the back, to be honest, because it's sort of like fall off. Um, but what a gnarly, twisty, cracking, cracking looking tree. If I can make some mood and get the, the shadows and highlights to work on this, it's gonna be a really, really <laughs> cool image. I quite like that one, that is very nice. Now the camera's not level. On the back of the screen, my horizon line's tilted, which doesn't matter because you can't tell where the horizon is. So it's not gonna make any difference whatsoever. And it just works with the flow coming through this, through this shot, it's just really, really nice. But all I keep doing is just picking the camera up and moving it around, changing the different focal lengths just to see what works. And again, there's, a, there's almost a shot there. And I say almost, Again, I like it. It's so nice. I've got to get the tripod now up into that position. Again, I can walk on the rule of thirds to it. Yeah, I can. The rule of thirds is exactly where it needs to be. And it's, it's, just, it's just great. I just want to get that gnarly tree and I may even sort myself out a bit of a selfie and then that's it. I'm going to call it a day because this video is turning long again. And uh, we can't keep making very, very long videos to explain very simple things. Or can we? <laughs> I don't know. So. This is the beauty of this massive tripod as well. I can get the camera up into positions where I can't even see. I don't even know how I'm gonna reach that up there. And the back leg should come all the way down. That's fully extended, the back leg, so that's as far as I can go. So let me tilt my camera down, see if I can just get this exposure where I wanted it to be. Somewhere around there, I think it was. Not quite, can't quite remember where the camera was now. Let's have a look, was I further back? I was, I've just got to come back a bit further, haven't I? So we'll put that back on there and excuse my waffling while I'm trying to work out where the camera's got to go. Somewhere around there, was it? I'm going to try and line it up best I can. Yeah, that's not bad. So again, we're gonna use this lovely S leading through the branch. I can even get the camera level this time. I've got the rule of third intersection, branch leading all the way through, or the trunk camera's not quite level I've just got to take it off of level slightly to line up my bottom corner let's just have a look there lock it off zoom in a little bit see what that looks like oh I'm trying to reach up because I'm actually stood in a dip as well I don't think that's bad I'm just going to take one exposure on this one I'm just going to focus on that point there and I'm just going to let that do that and the two seconds I wasn't on that time and I just think that's enough to lead through there. Not the best one. The best one was down this end. But yeah, I'm gonna call it day. I'm gonna call it day. Well, I don't even know what I was in the camera then, was I? I'm gonna call it a day there. 
uh, yeah, thanks for watching this. Hopefully it's explained the rule of thirds. I'll put the images up now. I'm gonna put the intersecting lines on them so you can have a look and see what they are. And um, yeah, hopefully, 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 I can see you now. Hopefully um, it explains a little bit of the rule of thirds. There's not much else I can do today, this morning. I'm just literally gonna enjoy this morning. I'm gonna take a picture of that Y-shaped tree as well and put that up and, uh, but yeah, selfie on the tree. Enjoy these few images, hope the expert wall of furs works. If you want to comment and let me know what you think, um, it'd be great. And if you've got any questions on anything, I will try and answer them for you. But yeah, basic rule of thirds. Hope that's explained it. Till next time, ciao for now. I'm going to enjoy my coffee, which is down here. Sit on this trunk and just listen to the birds. <laughs>